If you've ever seen my channel, you'd know I'm not one to generally harp on about desktop Linux, but I feel like this deserves a place on the channel. So Lenovo will start offering ThinkPads with Linux pre-installed, and you might be thinking at this point, well, if I want Linux on my device, can't I just go and install it myself? And yes, you'd be completely right, you could go and do that yourself, but I feel like even just outside of desktop Linux adoption, there are some benefits for more OEMs, especially big OEMs like Lenovo, to start shipping devices with Linux. If you're curious, at this stage it's going to be shipped with Fedora Linux. I don't really have an opinion on Fedora, I know some people don't like it and some people love it. It's Linux nonetheless though, so it is some form of Linux, let's just keep going down. Now, obviously they aren't the first OEM to be doing this. So we have Purism, we have System76, and we have Dell. I'll talk about Dell in just a moment and I'll also talk about the other ones as well. But the reason why it's important to be having Lenovo doing this is because Lenovo is one of if not the biggest OEM providers in the world. So if you have someone this massive who starts selling Linux devices, more and more people are going to start actually looking at this as something that's actually reasonable to do their work on. So Lenovo will be partnering with the Fedora project to offer your dream machine in the form of a ThinkPad powered by Fedora. This will be dubbed the Linux Community Series Fedora Edition and it will include the ThinkPad P1 Gen 2, which is this guy right here, the X1 Carbon, which is their like top of the line one, I believe it's the top of the line one, and also the P53. I don't know why they chose these specific devices, they could have picked anything in their lineup, but these are the devices that they will be going with. It's going to be shipped with Fedora 32 Workstation Linux, which I haven't tried myself, but I presume it's probably a good enough distro for something like this, and they will be set up to play nicely with first party repositories, which does mean that they won't come with NVIDIA drivers by default. However, it's easy enough to fix that by just downloading the proprietary sources. And then we've got this really weird looking stock photo where I'm almost 100% sure this laptop here is fake. The screens I haven't decided on, but this laptop here is definitely not here in the actual photo. But that's an entirely another story. So this isn't, as I said before, this isn't the first device to be shipped with Linux. So we have the XPS 13 Developer Edition, which is another laptop that Dell started selling. They started doing this a couple years back, back when we were still using Broadwell CPUs, and this was being shipped with Ubuntu, and you can still buy these today. So if we go to the Dell website, you can see XPS 13 Developer Edition 9300 being shipped with Ubuntu 1804. I assume that when they refresh the lineup, they will switch to 2004, but they haven't refreshed the lineup just yet. And as you saw before, you can also buy towers like this. Now, I don't know whether these are cost-effective devices, or you'd be better off buying just a regular XPS 13 and just sticking Ubuntu on it like that, but it is nice to see that they are actually selling devices like this. It was thought that Ubuntu would have been the prime candidate to stick on these devices because, as you saw, the XPS 13 was coming with Ubuntu. And Lenovo's announcement does hint at that possibility, and the main advantage of going that route is that Canonical offers a separate LTS version, which is what the Dell device is actually being shipped with, which is supported for five years after release, which is generally going to be longer than the lifespan of most modern laptops. I know if you use older ThinkPads, you've had them for like 10 years, but most modern devices don't last that long. At this stage, we know nothing about pricing or availability, but I can't imagine it's going to be too far off the pricing for the regular devices. I don't know what level of testing they'll have to go through to make sure it's always going to be stable with Fedora, but I hope that it's not going to be too far off these regular prices, because ThinkPads are already known to be very expensive devices for what's actually in them, and because you're actually paying for it to be a ThinkPad, you want the little, uh, the little nublet, and you want your very very specific style of uh, trackpad. So, I don't know what pricing is going to be like. As I said though, it shouldn't be too far off the regular pricing. I could imagine maybe $100 more, maybe $150 more, which in that case, you might as well just buy the regular ThinkPads. If they actually match the pricing though, that would be interesting. So say if you could buy a ThinkPad X1 Carbon, and it comes with Fedora 32, and you're going to stick Fedora 32 on it anyway, and it costs the same price. Now, if it's set up like that, I could actually see the value in that, especially if you're buying a bunch of them for a company. Now, for an individual, it's probably not that much extra work to just strip Windows off of it and stick Fedora on it if you wanted to use that anyway, but for a massive distribution of devices, then I could see the value in it 
even if it's just a little bit more expensive, really. But anyway, let's go back to the article. So AMD is going to be shipping the Ryzen 4000 series soon, and it would be nice to see Ryzen 4800H devices. I agree with this. The new Ryzen mobile CPUs look really cool. I hope Intel loses their just complete stranglehold on the uh, notebook market because Ryzen is looking pretty cool. Now you might be wondering why I think this is more important than say Purism who's selling the devices with Pure OS and System76 who's selling their devices with Ubuntu or Pop OS. And this has nothing to do with the distro. It could be a super old version of Ubuntu that comes with it. It could be Arch Linux. It could be Arco. It could be literally anything. It doesn't matter what the distro is. The reason why I think it's more important for Dell and Lenovo to do it, obviously not discrediting anything that Purism or System76 does. The reason why I think it's important for the really big OEMs to do it though, is because when they want to say sell an XPS 13 with Ubuntu, or they want to sell a ThinkPad with Fedora, they're not actually designing a device from the ground up. They've already got the device already designed and they're already selling tons of the devices. All they have to do is swap the OS on it and just make sure it's compatible. That's not a very complicated process and they're already selling hundreds of thousands of devices. So they've already got that sell rate of devices that can bring down the price of the hardware. Whereas if you look at someone like System76 or Purism, they are designing a device from the ground up. They don't really have a lot of sales so they end up paying more for the hardware because they can't bulk purchase as much hardware as Dell can. So it ends up leading to devices being more expensive. Now, I know the Purism devices are designed around security and all of this extra stuff, but if you don't really care about those extra features, it is just a device that's more expensive than a comparable Windows computer. I don't know about System76, but I assume they have the same sort of problem where it is a bit more expensive than a comparably powered Windows device, which isn't a problem with these companies. It's just a problem with how much people actually buy these devices. And over time, the prices can come down, especially if these companies do start getting more popular. But Dell and Lenovo already have that market share where they can already take advantage of these lower prices. If you make using Linux just way, way easier by actually selling devices that have Linux on it, more people are going to use Linux. And this is how Windows ended up taking over. It's because every single OEM just sold Windows devices. So everyone just assumed that computer meant Windows. Whereas if you give people options, they may try something out. Now, obviously, I don't think that Ubuntu or Fedora is just suddenly going to become the most popular way to use a computer. Windows is still going to be the monolith that it is, and it's going to still be the main thing people use. But if you give people the option to try something new out, maybe they will. And you might be saying, well, if they want to try it, they could just install it. But I know so many people who are still running Windows 7 because they don't know how to upgrade to Windows 10. Do you really think that someone is going to go out of their way to install Ubuntu when they don't even realize they can just upgrade Windows 10 by downloading the ISO and just clicking install? This isn't a simple process for people who aren't really technical. And I think a lot of people are stuck in the mindset where they think that everyone knows as much as they do. So if you just make the process easier, I think that more people are going to be likely to try it. Because the XPS 13 developer edition and the ThinkPads are generally more geared towards business class users, there is a concern with installing Linux out of the box. And that is that getting Windows installed after Linux is kind of a massive pain. So you can do it. But the problem is that if you do it wrong, Windows decides that it's the only one that has a bootloader that matters and just completely ignores Linux. So getting it installed in the other way is generally a lot easier because if you install Windows first and then Linux, Grub tries to take over as the bootloader, but it's not like, okay, this drive that has Windows on it just doesn't exist anymore. It's like, okay, well, that's a Windows thing over there. We'll just keep it isolated over in that direction and you can do your Linux stuff over here. Windows doesn't play like that though. So if these devices have a second slot for a hard drive, and some of them do, I'm not sure about the XPS 13, but I would assume that the more high-end ThinkPads probably have a second drive pre-installed in them, or you can install a second drive in them. If you install Windows on that second drive and then just use your UEFI or your BIOS to just switch over manually like that, that's generally going to be safer, and that's the way I do it. I know you can get Grub set up to actually detect the drive and let you actually select it in the Grub menu. I haven't worked out how to do it though, and it's just easier for me to do it through the UEFI. 
Now the other thing is that because it's for the business type of users, if you need Linux, you generally either will know how to install it or your business will show you how to do it or they'll do it for you. So unless you specifically need Fedora or you specifically need Ubuntu, it's a bit of a weird choice for these to be the business class devices. I think it might make more sense to do it for the more general consumer and then if they are say on Windows 7 and they don't know how to upgrade to Windows 10, they could either buy a Windows 10 device or they could buy a Linux device. Because there's so many people I know who just do not know how to upgrade from Windows 7 to Windows 10. I'm living with one right now. I don't think it really makes as much sense for the business users just because, especially for a developer, if you're a developer and you don't know how to install Linux, I am very sad. I am, I'm kind of worried for you. I guess if you're like a macOS developer, it's fine. But if you're someone who does like web development or anything like that and you don't know how to install Linux, it's like five minutes of work, you'll work it out pretty quickly. Now, I do think it's very important for OEMs to start shipping these devices. And the reason why I think it is, is because upgrading your firmware for things like your motherboard is not easy on Linux. There are some manufacturers that still provide ways to do it. A lot of them though, they'll give you some EXE to do it and you just have to do it through Windows. Some, as I said, some manufacturers provide ways to do it and I think ASRock is one of them. So people recommend ASRock a lot of the time, but things like Asus and Gigabyte and other motherboard manufacturers that I can't think off the top of my head, they don't provide ways to do it on Linux. Some of them people found workarounds for, but some of them is just straight up not possible to do. So you just have to install Windows on a separate drive, upgrade the firmware like that, and then go back to using Linux, which is a pain. And if more people started using Linux, maybe these motherboard manufacturers would actually provide ways to do it on Linux. Like say, just here's a Ubuntu package to do it. And if you have an Ubuntu package to do it, then you can just go and do it on any other distro with no work whatsoever. I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Yellow Kim, Nathan, Tiki, Andrew Road, Tony, Oki, Larry, Ray, and Zilver. So if you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below. Also, my Amazon affiliate links are down there. So if you want to buy the gear on use this channel or just anything else on Amazon, and I'll get a small kickback for it. Also, be sure to go check out my podcast. That is Tech Over Tea. It's available on Tuesday on Library and also Thursday on YouTube. And the audio version, this stage, not sure when it's coming out, sometime between Tuesday and Thursday. Right now it's Thursday. I'm thinking of moving it to Tuesday though. The audio version will be wherever you can find podcasts. Also, remember to go subscribe to this channel and ding the little bell icon down below. And remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.